think this will be helpful. We've got a, a, a good uh, attendance today, and, and the city manager's report, I think, will be addressing an issue that, that all of us are interested in and bring some clarity. And so um, I'd ask for the uh, city manager's report and update. Mayor, for the record, Keith Selman, interim city manager. Uh, this report will take us a little bit past the uh, the 12 o'clock hour. That's we, fine. We will, um, uh, there's a, a couple of elements to this presentation that we want to make the public aware of. Uh, first of all, uh, following up on, on this, this presentation uh, is the update. This is what we're doing now. We're giving the update to some of the issues we've been experiencing in our call center and our billing. And that's what we're doing here this afternoon. Uh, the, the first el element of the call center, and, and first let me say that we understand that there's a lack of confidence uh, in parts of our community and in our community in terms of our building and our call center, and we are uh, aggressively addressing these issues. And it's not a, something we should do, it's something we must do. We must garner and get back the, the confidence that our consumers have in uh, the services that we provide. The, and so let me go back to our multi-prong multi approach. The first thing we've attacked is our, is our call center. Um, I hope that uh, any one of you all or anyone in the community that has called the call center in the last um, week or so, last couple of weeks, have had a better experience than they had if they called a month ago, say for example. We've committed a lot of resources to, to the call center, as much as 29 people across the departments multiple departments um, across departmental collaboration to have our call center more functional and more service oriented. So those call, call times have dropped. The average call time has dropped on peak days from 30 minutes to 10 minutes. And uh, we've also enhanced, uh, one of the reasons is we've ha enhanced our options. As you get into the call center, you can go to other options and, and not go directly to an individual, but you might be able to help yourself. And that was a big part of what we think we're, is, is, is speeding those processes up. We're not finished there though. We're gonna do a couple of other things. We're, we're looking at implementing a customer relation uh, manage, manager, a CRM. And this would be a tracking device for a, a software that would track calls and service the calls where someone could actually see where they are in a process of, of having their issues addressed. And then we're also looking at the, a WaterSmart uh, software where an individual could go online and look and see exactly what their consumption looks like. And in that software, we're gonna, we're gonna run it as a pilot and we're going to, to, to ask people that call into our call center if they would be willing to participate in that pilot program. So those are steps we're taking on the call center. Another prong, uh, kind of a third prong, is uh, something that has been raised by the city council and that's going back to winter averaging. We're gonna look to bring something back next week for council action on winter averaging. The, the other prong, which is our billing, and addressing that. And as I reported at the previous council meeting, we have formulated a, an internal team, but, but the team has expanded. Our, that team does include people from N4. And we're not gonna do a presentation today from N4, and the reason being we think it's a little bit premature for them to come forward, seeing that we're still in a diagnostic mode. So they will be making a presentation at a future council meeting to outline their software and what it does and how it operates. But as we're in this diagnostic, diagnostic mode, we're looking to address issues, identify problems, and move forward, and we're doing so very quickly. Leading this team, uh, which includes N4 and internal staff, is an independent information uh, technology contractor, uh, Peter Collins. Uh, some of you may have met him. I'd like to turn it over to him at this time to give a brief presentation of what he has found. He's been on the, on the job for a little less than a week, but, um, but he's making real headway, and I would like for him to, to take a few minutes and present to city council. Okay. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. My name is Peter Collins. I'm gonna brief about the, the Infor system, but focus on the billing system and the bills that have been produced. Do we have a slide up? I thought we had, do we have that projected? There we go, you got it? Yes, this is gonna be simply in black and white, so we'll get right down to the brass tacks. 
This is a flow chart. It's high level, but it need, it's okay for that for this presentation. You have the Infor software, which is the software that actually produces the utility bills, and then the output to that goes to a printer. And then from there, it goes to the customer. In that system, we have major problems with the way the bill actually looked. Because if you examine the bill, which a lot of people have, mathematically, you sometimes can't even work the numbers backwards and try to figure out what it all meant. So as soon as I started, I guess, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, we started to change that bill to, to where it makes common sense to where you look at that. That bill is ready to go, and it looks like we'll start using that tomorrow. And then there's another feature in it that's not ready yet, and it took a little bit more time. And when we do changes like this, we always have to be cautious that we actually test what we're doing, and we're confident we don't create a whole other series of issues or problems. But on a bill, there'd be a window that if you're on a payment plan or anything else you need, it's going to be spelled out in that area there with some detail. And that's been a missing link that has caused a number of issues for people receiving the bills. But the biggest thing, mathematically, you should be able to get back to see the bill and figure out where it came from, account balance, and then shows the charges, credits, whatever, and then how much you owe. Very simple, very straightforward. As far as that, there was a rate change with solid waste, and we were able to catch that error, that the rate change went in. Through testing, which is, I, is key, when that was discovered in four, which I've been working with quite a bit, um, I want to share that they are supportive, and they jumped on that issue immediately, and the issue was resolved. and has been tested, and that change is already in production, and the billing cycles, when we run them, that rate change will be in that billing cycle, and which should start tomorrow. So that's pretty straightforward. Then we need to talk about how do we actually get the information in order to produce the bills. Well, the utility or in for relies on outside information from other systems. So there's the meter system, automatic meet and read and AMR. Well, in between in for, if you look at your diagram, you have a program called STAR. STAR basically is a server that manages, or software application that manages all the meters and information as they come in from the wireless system to where the meters are read remotely. In STAR, and I'm just gonna work myself backwards here. When N4, say, is gonna do billing cycle one, it says, I'm ready for billing cycle one, Here's all the meters that I actually want to read. That information gets sent to STAR. STAR says, that's great. I'm going to send you back those meter readings for the ones that you requested. N4 receives the information, and it does an edit or a validation on the information. You just can't take it for granted. Through that validation, there's exceptions. You'll see low water usage, high water usage, or no meter read, and there's some other ones, but the no meter read is the key here. And what happens then, or what that actually means, it's not that it's zero usage, it's simply we don't have the read. Well, when you look at that, and you see on billing cycle one, for example, you have 1,000 no meter reads, then that raises some eyebrows. So why do we actually have that? In the STAR system, excuse me, in the N4 system, it looks back six days for a valid read off a meter. And then the STAR system actually looks back six days for a valid meter read. If it doesn't find it, then it becomes a no read. In our N4 system, it only looked back four days, not six days. So at first, we went ahead and we changed it. We ran our test. Didn't change the number at all. I thought maybe it was this extremely low-hanging fruit that it would be a simple repair on, on the no meter reads. Well, since it wasn't, I got the straight data files from, from Infor and then also from STAR. And then I did some analysis. And basically, 
Enforce says, I want meter reads for billing cycle one, and I'm just use, gonna use even numbers, 6,000 of them. Star sends back, but there was only 5,000. Infor actually doing the job of validation says, I know the meter reads that I want, but if I don't get them, I want you to classify them as an exception as no meter read. That was the indication that we had other issues somewhere else outside the system. If you look at the star system, what also interface are what's called DCU, data collection units. It's wireless, they're mounted on poles or maybe be on a water tower. And behind the C DCUs, you have all the meters for that DCU that actually polls and receives the information from the different areas in our city. And then it is sent to the star system. So we started looking at the DCUs, there's about 82 in the city. Eight of them was just, they were just dead in the water. So they actually weren't collecting the information from the meters automatically. Does this contribute to our situation with the, the um, no meter read? Yes, it actually does. So already, and I wanna thank the city manager for empowering me to actually work hard and give me carte blanche to move swiftly here. Um, not bogged down with a lot of bureaucracy because we're at a critical phase with this system and I don't need to reinforce that. I think everybody understands. So I was able to pull some folks from internal, um, Travis and a group of his folks. And my background is also in wireless communication, cell phone, I did a cell phone system in Canada. So I know how this is supposed to be maintained. Met with them, they're geared up, they're in the field replacing the eight that's gone bad. Actually, one got struck by lightning. When? We don't know, but it actually did. So, with that said, we'll have the eight on, we'll have the 82 units up and running, but we also need to know how are they actually functioning. You can have bad antennas, you can have misconfiguration, the backhaul, is that streamlined, some are online, and then they're offline, then they come back online. So we're peeling this back, and we're gonna treat this, which it always should have been treated as, a mission critical system that supports an enterprise system. With this not being treated as mission critical, that created a lot of problems in our billing system and downstream from that point. So we have the DCUs in the process of being fixed and being addressed, checking configuration, and the vendor for that is actually the star vendor or Eclair. I've spoke with them. We're gonna have some training over the web next week with staff because you can throw alarms in this. It's all there. All you have to do is it could say that you have an alarm state this is what it is. It will send an email to whoever you want. It can, you can, your staff can be extremely proactive. So we're driving that down to treat this as a mission critical system. And if we have one offline, we wanna know when, we wanna know when it happens, and then we need to have the right action taken because when one's down, you can affect thousands of, of meters that it actually serves. So with that said, as we make our way through it, we're also gonna have a technician come down to meet with our staff to show how to do properly the infield maintenance. I bring the other talent as far as how to manage the sites, how to be proactive on detection, but I need somebody from the company to come down, show termination of antennas, or how to test the, t the antennas, the coax cables, the the unit itself, and also the, the, the backbone for it to get it back to the, the broadband that's connected so the server receives the information from the DCU. Once that's done, then we're still not out of the woods. We have all those um, MTUs, which is just a transmitter attached to your water meter or the gas meter. And what that is, is that we may have a number of those that are out and 
there's a high probability once we deal with the DSUs, we're still gonna have issues on the field with the automatic read because of the MTUs, or the transmitters on the, on the water meters. So jumping ahead into the future, already working with staff to have a strike team that's gonna go out and proactively replace these and then go, bless you, and then um, replace these and then uh, we'll have a methodical plan and then we can be testing and seeing uh, what our results are. In wireless technology, it can be a number of reasons why something doesn't get to one point to the other. You've had your phones drop off on your cell phones or you can't dial out, whatever, but it should not be this extreme. It should not be to this extreme. So as far as staff there are basically in the trenches or bailing the, the ship out, the water is just about up to the gunwales and they have worked to the best of their capacity in billing in other areas that actually try to make this work. And the thing is that we have to think enterprise from this point, not in a silo world. We have to take advantage of making the change that there's critical systems that support the enterprise system. And the point is, is that we owe it to the community, and I live in the community, is that we need our processes streamlined to be as efficient as we can and have the information as accurate as possible. Do you have any questions? And thank you for the time. Well, we, <clears throat> I don't, well, Mr. Molina. Uh, Rebecca, is, is right now the appropriate time for questions regarding this subject? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, breaking protocol. Um, so we've got the problem figured out. Well, we, we're getting there. And you mentioned that you've got staff out there making repairs as we speak. Uh, probably not today because of the rain. Right. Um, but when do you anticipate that those repairs are, are going to be made? Well, we have, eight, we have about one is getting the ones that are down up. That's the eight. We should still be on target for Friday. The rest of them, the balance, 70 plus, is going to take at least six weeks for us to accomplish that. But as we're, in, as we're making the inspection, doing the proper maintenance on it, we can aggressively be tacking that area to address any M MTUs issues or the transmitters on the water meters so we can just keep going and try to keep decreasing the amount of no reads in, in the system. Well, Mr. Collins, I thank you for your diligence. I know that you were brought on just last week and, uh, and you've made great strides in helping to get us, uh, get this issue resolved. Um, Mr. Selman, the issue that we've had with the residents is that they're calling in and a lot of them were being told that it's, it's not the city's fault and if you want us to go out there and look, uh, you're gonna have to pay an inspection fee. Uh, and that's what, $60, 65? Yes, sir. Um, I, I really think that now that we know what the issue is, I, I really think that uh, we need to make it right, do right by the citizens and refund that money for those that are eligible. So I'd like to see that process uh, started. Um, also, what I would like to see is once we've get, got all these kinks worked out, uh, I would like to see some sort of credit system for those that were uh, that have been overcharged and that have been paying I think we need to implement that and I'd also like to see a flexible very very flexible payment plan for those residents who are not being charged The, uh, the the first part of that, uh, since since the other one might be a little bit more time sensitive, the the latter two that you mentioned. But the first one, if uh, if the council were to so direct the staff to bring something back at at the uh, 
in the next meeting or the meeting thereafter for council action to find a mechanism so for moved. waiving that fee. That, that, well, you got you need formal motion, or is that just pretty much understood? Uh, we'll take a formal action. There's a motion to basically make the make the customer whole in the in the adjustment of their bills based on the information. That's what you're on that on that sixty dollar part. The others and weigh right. the inspection. Right. Yeah. And and quit recommending they go out and do it anymore because <laughs> why charge them and then have to refund it? Just don't do it. We've got you covered. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Now you had something else about that, that was that was it, Mayor. Okay. You uh Mr. Hunter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh Mr. Collins, we've I've heard a lot of great things about you and over the past week and I really appreciate all your efforts. Now back to the meter reading. Can you explain very summarize shortly? how the individual residences or the individual properties, how the meters read, do they read at those locations? How, how, how does this work? When you have a no meter read in the residential is that there's too much volume to actually go on and physically read all of them during the billing cycle. If it's a perfect world, and that does happen sometimes, then the tickets curate a work order and they go out and they read the meter reading and they put it into the system for the billing cycle. But in this case, what has occurred is because of the vast volume, because we have um, you know, 20 billing cycles, is that there's no time to actually physically go out and read all of them. And they have been estimated for quite a duration. Unless we had an automatic reading software program already put in place and equipment. Oh, we do. But I guess yeah. a more updated one would be able to make all these readings, or is it just either way it wouldn't? Is it out of date, or I guess that's what I'm trying to... Well, the problem is, is with the system, and it hasn't been maintained for a number of years. It looks like about three years. You just can't let a system that's exposed to the elements and the technology behind it. It relied on the wireless system or the Wi-Fi system that doesn't function properly and that would cause disconnects. There's multiple problems. My recommendation is in the approach, let's fix what we have. Let's do the maintenance on it and then we can judge. We got the software where you can actually judge the performance down to the water meter to the DCU and then we can address it accordingly. There are newer versions, later versions now, or updated DCUs, uh, data collection units, that are more powerful and can cover more area with less. One issue that this is uh, UHF. When you utilize UFH frequency, it loves height. Height's your friend. In other systems, sometimes height's not your friend. But in this case, on the initial install of this system, I don't know how many years ago it actually went in, there was a propagation map that says, show me the coverage with where the DCU needs to be and how we're gonna cover it. But the vendor wasn't allowed to install the antennas or the DCU, they kept them together more than 20 feet high because your DCU in theory should be 10 feet to 12 feet. You don't want people playing with them. You can go simply service them. Then you run an, a wire up to the antenna and you gain the height. And that's what we're looking at because we're gonna change probably quite a bit by simply raising the antenna heights on where we can do it. Water tower. The water tower, tower is round. You got a nice height, 200 feet, whatever it may be, but you only have an antenna on one side. There's three other sides that you should put four because the frequency doesn't go through the tower to get the other side. So there's basic items that we can go ahead and improve today. And then plus if the DCU is just life cycles done, we have the vendor standing by with replacement units and we're getting some pricing on that. So to answer your question, 
the solution today is stabilize, assess, and there may be a recommendation that comes back. These are the reasons why we actually need to look at a different system. But the system we have is a tier one system. They're not. It's not a second rate system. Let's make work what we have, and then we declare it's working, it doesn't meet our needs. Then we need to go ahead and move forward and do a proper procurement with strong project management to where we manage the project and the vendor. We don't allow the vendor to manage us anymore because that's one of the reasons why we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Opal. Well, Mr. Collins, thank you very much. It, it looks like that you've been able to kind of get that 30,000 foot view of the whole enterprise and begin to take those pieces and, and, and reassemble them and find out where the weak spots have been. So um, you mentioned staff, you've got some confidence that staff is out doing what is needed at this point in time. And you alluded to this, but I wanna make sure I heard that correctly. So in working with the vendor, which is in for, are you getting the responsiveness out of Infor that you think we need at this point in time? Well, let me, as far as this good, good question, um, it's easy to have perception when you have an enterprise system that anything connected to it, if it's not functioning properly, it's in for, because that's the label, that's the, the, the heart. Yes, I'm getting very proactive support from in for. I think that with N4, are there other issues? There are. There are other issues that we will be working for, uh, working towards and you know, identifying and, and addressing those. There's other fixes already in the works that's going to start, that's happening. But yes, I feel N4 and it is another T tier one system. It isn't some second or third rated software. And it's just like I say, is the it's the proper structure for procurement, the clearly defined requirements, that implementation, that strong project management, and then when you accept it, your original requirements should be your acceptance checklist. And you bring that in, and this is lessons learned here. You bring that into the future, you won't have these conversations. And nothing's perfect in software. I always tell people, everybody assumes software is an exact science. It's not. Things happen. It gets into theory. But yes, Enforce stepped up to the plate. I've met with them. I have spoken to them on the phone. Uh, basically, the first time I talked to them was last Thursday morning. So, Good. And I've been repeated phone calls afterwards. I, just, I think it's very important that the community understands that with the uh, addition of your expertise to the team, we've got a now full complement of individuals who can move this forward, and so I really appreciate that. I do want to make one distinction, though, Mr. Selman, and I'm not sure how we do this. Um, we've been hearing about bills that have a very large amount, and, and recently there was one mentioned it was about $1,500. And in going in and doing the forensic work with the staff, that particular bill actually ha was an accumulation of failure to pay since before January. Mm -hmm. So... If you don't pay your full utility bill over 10 or 12 months and it's a $200 bill, it becomes a much larger bill than you can afford to pay. And so I think we're going to need to really think through how to make this distinction because now the question's in the system. Um, there was also a question about, well, once I go on a payment plan, do I have to pay my current bill? So there's a lot of questions about how do I manage that part, and that's entirely different from any systematic issues, whether it reads or doesn't read or anything else. And so I, I'm, I'm gonna invite you and maybe the staff to try to help us find individuals, organizations. If I can't pay my bill, that's a totally different issue than the bill's not right. And so we may need to begin to look at and do a deeper dive of where we can refer those individuals who are struggling with that because we as a city don't have the ability to provide you services and then not let you pay for them. And I think that's an right. important distinction. Ms. Bojardo. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Collins, thank you uh, for your work and everything you're doing. Um, thank you. I'm not going to ask or comment on that because I'm going to leave that to you in terms of what you're doing. My true concern here today is um, the fact that we have June of this year, for example, 24,000 disconnections versus 4,500 last year, the same time. 
My point is, Ms. Opal somewhat touched on it, and the, the answer to this question was no, but how can we not differentiate between people who are being, and this is not for you, right. people who can differ, uh, whose water bills are being disconnected today still because of this. And when I say this, that's the second part of my, my, my questions here in a minute. This is not solely, unless you're gonna tell me it is, is it solely due to a computer system? I don't believe, and I'm gonna read an email that I'd like for everyone to hear that I've received many of this sort. Um, but my first question is, can we differentiate between people's bills who have been disconnected due to when we made these changes and all of this began? Because there's, there's, there's a responsibility that we need to own. And I think we all do. We don't, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. But we're not putting anything into action in terms of owning that. And that's, you don't disconnect someone who didn't have anything to do. They don't care if that has to do with a computer system or, uh, you know, method billing of, uh, the method of billing. They care that, and, and we're not talking about who can't, you know, past bills. I'm not talking about that because that's a very good point. You're right. I am just talking about a person who could not pay because to no fault of their own. Can we differentiate those disconnections? Because there is clearly a much higher rate of disconnection since all of this versus prior to. We will endeavor to differentiate. Okay, because my next thing is we can't allow it to continue to happen. It isn't right. And I am happy to make a motion to cease all disconnections in regards to, I don't even know what you want to call this, because it isn't fair that, that somebody's mother or father or grandparents or sisters, you know, I mean, it's just not fair. It's not right. And we're owning it. We are doing the right thing. We're doing the right thing. But we need to help who we put in jeopardy of no water. If, uh, if the council wants to give a motion of direction to include that into that $60 uh, I may, would like to, may I ask I, a question before we do that? Um, I thought that we were not disconnecting as of the 26th of September. Okay. Let's finish the comment. Yeah, I'm gonna hold my motion and, and let's finish because I'm, I'm not done. Um, and there's another comment, but let's see here. So question answered. Motion is going to be to, to cease all disconnections in regards to our water billing issues. Um, then the second thing is, I'm going to read this email, and whoever can address it, please do. Just recently, I got a city bill, water, trash, and sewer, from the city, and there was a charge called, quote, wastewater. Therefore, I called the city and asked them what the heck is wastewater. The customer service representative stated that any time one turns on the water, it is determined that this goes down the sewer and the public gets charged for this use. I corrected the young man and stated that most of my water does not go down the sewer system and goes directly on my lawn into the grass. Therefore, that is a wrong assumption that all water goes down a sewer pipe. He didn't know what to say after I provided this comment. I'm going to look a little more into this as well. Now, the rest of some of her email was about winter quarter averaging versus actual consumption. So is this correct? Because I think the question I have run into um, visiting with people is what is wastewater? And if wastewater is being calculated both ways, and I'm bringing this up because unless someone tells me today that the reason and the sole reason for what we're going through is this billing system, then I'll drop all of this. Can anyone tell me that? In other words, we made a change to the methodology of billing. This, Correct. pardon? And the, rates. and the rates, yes. However, the change was made. So. She is saying, how are you calculating my wastewater? It doesn't go down the drain. It goes into the yard. And that's not the first email I've gotten of this sort. So I, I need, for me, I need explanation on 
what is wastewater? And if it is this, and this is just the way this is calculated, then I, I'd really put pressure on bringing back some clarity or explanation or what we're going to do in terms of going back to winter quarter averaging as the mayor had directed a couple of weeks ago versus uh, you know staying here. I know you mentioned next week that will come forth, but that's as critical as this gentleman being here addressing, I, I would say, the other part of this issue. But my first question is, what is this issue comprised of? The compute, this billing system and or the methodology of what we're doing or just one or the other? The email that you just read was methodology. Right. Calculation. Right. For wastewater. Right. I understand that. What is this issue comprised of? Well, what we're going you, you mean in terms of the email that you just read? No, I'm talking about in terms of someone's bill coming out at these, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. Mm -hmm. Does that have to do solely with all I keep hearing is in for, in for, in for. And I know we have issues there. I know we do. We've had them before. So I'm glad we're doing this. But you've stated that next week we will have the... Uh, the council has requested that we bring back the winter averaging right. as an option. So that is another part of this question mark. It, it, it's, it's a, if, if someone under our current billing system, if someone is a heavy consumer of water, the billing for wastewater is directly proportional to water consumption. That's your current billing methodology. So the answer is yes. It, so the, the, the billing method going from winter quarter averaging to actual consumption is affecting what we're experiencing today. It could be. Okay. If they're a heavy consumer, they will see an increase in their billing. Well, it's the, it's the perfect storm. You've got your rates, but your rates are tied to the volume. And if you're getting a bad reading on your volume, then your rates impact that the rates i mean it's a combined rate but the volume is <coughs> what's the trigger so wastewater has been on the bills for years but it's the fact that the rates have changed significantly based on the volumes that we're getting the readings on i think once you get the volume straightened out then they should fall back in line so the rates are fixed it's just the, the volume is the variable is that not correct if i'm saying something wrong <laughs> You got your water people down there shaking their head with grins on their face. We don't want to put. We don't want to say anything wrong. Don't be afraid to speak the, up. The the issue is is when you don't have a meter, no meter read, and it's not physically read, then it's estimated, right? And that could be a contributor to to a situation if it's overstated, and in some cases it could be understated. But we're going to see that when we make these changes and we start reading and getting as many as we can of the meters aren't being read today, we're gonna to see a spike on questions about now that we have accurate meter reading, then some could be we owe a credit, others is an overcharge. And we anticipate that to occur. And that could be a contributing factor to what you are addressing right now. And sir, how long did you say it would more or less take for all of this to, or for you to? To start filtering out mm -hmm. is basically as we start working on DCUs in the different areas and we proactively look at the transmitters on the meters, that it could be six to eight weeks for us. We have some supply issues with the transmitters, but I think we, you're going to be given an update once a week. Correct. We can again brief you on where we're at and tell you what we've done and what we found and what we're moving forward on be more than happy to do that okay mr roy thank you i want to clarify a couple things mm -hmm. we've i've had complaints also from citizens who have said that they just haven't had a bill period Matter of fact, they've made multiple phone calls to try and get a bill. Mm -hmm. And they've been 
told, yes, your bill will be out. That cycle's coming out. You're going to get a bill. And they've waited. They've went down. They've, they've come, and they still can't get a bill. As a result of that, you know, you could have two or three, four months that have went by. They haven't had a bill, so then they can't submit a payment. I want to make sure, Mr. Selman, are we addressing those issues also where if somebody hasn't had a bill and it hasn't been generated that we take that into consideration? Um, because, again, whether we penalize them and we told them to get $60, I want to make sure that we have all of those scenarios included in before we make a motion so that we know that right now we have to err on the side of the consumer. And the other thing I think what we're talking about in terms of this winter averaging in that is that, um, well, right now, if, if, if I understand what you're saying, if the meters aren't accurate and whether they aren't engaging or, and you're having to have somebody do an estimate, can you tell me right now, based on your short, overview of what you've had the chance to look at how many of those estimates have we done on average to date well you went live in january correct and the historical data that i can see on no meter reads uh, last month was about fourteen thousand, and then you can take the previous month was probably touching 12 to 13 and then the data falls off i can't it doesn't exist, but if we just roughly ran some simple simple math on it, you can easily be looking over 100,000. So that means a human being basically has to sit there and read those bills at that value. And exactly, and that's the point with the staff has been exposed to that constant. There was never relief, run one bill cycle, next bill cycle, and just repeat. And it's amazing that they actually kept pace with this. And also the folks in the water department going out and aggressively trying to read meters. This, once this is resolved, is gonna relieve a lot of pressure and allow people to stay, take a step back and do the job that they're really supposed to be doing. This is just crisis management or crisis every day. And I'm just impressed how well they were able to keep the ship afloat. That's the only question I have. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Garza. Two things. I mean, appreciate your work, first off, Peter. I Thank you. Kind of saw an overview, and I, and I knew, I felt all along that we had some accounts that weren't being billed because I had one that I wasn't receiving any readings on. And, and so I know there was an issue. Uh, the other side of the, and this is the stuff that you're addressing and that's necessary in order to be able to to get out of crisis mode. Right. But the other side is, and I, and I do believe, and I think Mr. Harder was, Councilwoman Harder was touching on it, is that we do have some issues related to the wastewater calculations and the change in the rate structure that we, that we looked at last July. So you're addressing those accounts and those people that are not, have not been receiving bills or have not been getting accurate readings because the, that the is transmitting that equipment and the meters or not operating the way they're supposed to. But the other side of the puzzle uh, is that we still have those those uh, customers that have been, in my opinion, overbilled or charged outrageous amounts that have been on pay payment plans that we still have to address. And in the fullness of time, if we've got 14 or 15,000 uh, meters that we haven't read, we still have 80 something percent of the folks that are receiving their bills that are getting the right amounts. That they're, they don't have the swimming pools, they don't have the, that still have a responsibility to pay for the water they're using in order for us to be able to, mm -hmm. to have a system. The system is the city, we're all the city, it's not an abstract entity, we're all the city, we're all in this together and we've got a system that we've got to fund. And now we don't wanna overcharge anybody, we wanna make sure nobody gets overcharged. We wanna make sure nobody gets disconnected that could possibly be you know, be disconnected, in, you know, improperly, unfairly. Mm -hmm. But we've still got a system that we've got to maintain, that we've got to make sure that, and we want to get back to, you know, to, to correct as soon as possible. So for those individuals that haven't received a bill but know last year 
at this particular period, they were paying $150. They should be sending some amount in so that number doesn't continue to, to grow, correct? Well, whether or not somebody sends the money in, in theory, they should. Um, right. But I know that on the hot list is the focus on the no bills. And the no bills. Why don't I have a bill? So it is that? something that I'll be looking at. I, I couldn't possibly look at that in the, the little amount of time I've been here. Right. I understand. But I can move forward. And there's, you know, to look at the uh, high water usage is another one that became that I can't believe I used 10,000 gallons last month or whatever it may be. So that's the next focus point okay. is to start drilling down on those different situations to find out the true root cause. Either okay. it is something with the software or it's something with the way the process works or it's just the way it is. Um, I do want to mention as far as the water meters themselves, they're solid. They're very reliable. They are fully capable of providing accurate water readings. It's from the transmitter forward. So I don't want to throw the water meters into the mix because okay. they're, it's very rare that one that actually really goes bad. So, but yes, that's all being looked at. And uh, we'll be drilling down more. Okay, thank you. Amos Smith. Thank you, Mr. Collins. I really appreciate this. It starts to give us a little bit more clarity uh, with it. So um, your, your comments about the water meters being solid. Uh, so what you're saying, we have a communication issue and a software issue. That's correct, from the, from the, mo uh, okay. the water meter forward. From the water meter forward. And on those water meters, can we go to any water meter right now and see what the consumption is? Uh, Mr. Van Vleck, can you? Mark Van Vleck, Assistancy Manager. Yes, there's a register on it, and we, we can read them. And, and that's what he was talking about is the readings that we've been doing. But the, the short period you have between when you know you need a read, getting the reading done, then getting it into the software to get into the bill is why there's so many estimated. So, so our root basis there, we've got a meter that has a odometer-like dial on there that's physical, doesn't have anything to do with software, communication, N4, STAR, or anything else. You could drive out today to all 84,000 meters and see what the current or what that meter read is today. Yes, sir, and, and, and we would be gladly treat, uh, okay. teach any customer how to read them also. Okay, and uh, we just heard that we've discon uh, discontinued disc <laughs> discontinuing on September 26. So that is, is currently being done with it. I, I've got, I, I agree with what everybody's been, what we've done to our consumers out there is, I, I can't say in strong enough words about it, but it's good to see that we're finally addressing the problems and moving forward. I would like to see some budgetary is I've looked at the consumption, where we are to budget. It, it looks like that uh, we've got a lot of reads out there that haven't been paid for. We cannot go in there and say, okay, you owe for the last three months because you were a no read on there and we were estimating minimum amounts. I looked at some bills that had minimum amounts where they were using 30,000 gallons a month and then they were getting charged for 2,000 because they were no reads. So we've got all this pent up sitting there. And we, I think it'd be helpful to this body to, to have an idea of what that is uh, with it. We, we know what our pumpage is, how much water we pumped, how we can reconcile those two things. And so going forward, what we can do to take care of our customers, and, and you all are our customers on there, even though we're a monopoly in this, but also watch out for the financial integrity of the system. Again, thank you, Mr. Collins, for everything you've done, and thank you. thank you for starting to see some clarity at last on this. Ms. Opal. I have a quick question. This has continued to come up, and, and so I actually have uh, a question and a request. I'll start with the request. The, the, the black and white boxes that you were sharing was very clear. I think we could use something like that for some of these, the, the multiple points of question, if you will, uh, because I'm going to ask, I think it was in April of last year, maybe there was one in May, 
But this council, maybe it was even later than that, this council sat and looked at how we were going to structure rates to take place <coughs> this year, right? This year, last year? <coughs> and the question about wastewater, how we're doing wastewater, there was a full presentation by staff as to why we needed to consider not continuing with wastewater winter averaging. So, so it didn't just kind of occur. This was a, a deliberative process that this body at some point through staff's recommendation took an affirmative action to make that happen. And I would like to know the dates that those were discussed. I think there were some presentations. We probably need to go back and review that because a lot has happened since then. We had a hurricane and a whole lot of other things. So it would be a good idea, I think, to go back and maybe review those presentations. I think they were in a workshop setting. It was correct? between, uh, council member, it was between March and August. And because the I last, know I set the final some of those. thing was September. So, so we need to go back and, and, and begin to disassemble how we got to this spot. But, but just along this way, there's, there's no reads, there's increased bills, there's high charges, there's undercharges. So there are many different points of uh, consideration on what's causing that. And I do want to remind folks as well that what you receive is a total utility bill. So there are things on that bill in addition to water. And so be sure to look at water separately from some of these other components because the one I was referencing earlier that was talked about being a $1,500 water bill wasn't that, it was the whole utility bill that had gone unpaid for some substantial period of time. So there, there are so many variables to this and I just wanna support staff's decision to, to, to seize the cutoffs again. I know that we did that when this was initially implemented because we had concerns about the integrity. When it became clear that we couldn't quite stand firm on that, um, but it is my understanding if someone is found to be illegally using our city water, uh, that we will stop that. Oh, that's a different matter. So yes. that's a totally yes. different, so if someone, you know, is, is using water when they shouldn't be, we're still gonna stand firm on that and say, you can't have our water for free. And I think that's what you're referring to, Mr. Garza, is that when we provide a service to our citizens, we, we do indeed have to pay for that service and that, but right now the question is, are our citizens getting the services? I do wanna say one other uh, piece of the puzzle, which is Water Smart is gonna be a great tool to implement and move forward so that citizens can see some of that same data. I know that our staff, uh, having worked with the UBO team, um, w there's a lot more data behind that that the average consumer can't see. And so to give them a window into the usage and to have more control, it's just what we do today in the contemporary times of, of social media and online, and I think it's gonna be a huge asset for us. So congratulations on that. We look forward to continuing to see great resolution, uh, speedy resolution to mm. some of these questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Risley. Uh, before city council takes any action relating to any kind of direction to cease water cutoffs, I would caution city council that we have water revenue bond covenants that we need to take into account and our utility and our utility bond rating we need to be careful of uh, I would any official action on that I would recommend that we have an opportunity to review those covenants prior to taking <coughs> such action because they could have significant adverse impact okay. well, I mean uh, any other questions one I, I want to commend uh, Mr. Selman, or however you two got hooked up, and I'm glad you're living in Corpus Christi and available. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I think we probably learned more today than we've learned in the last two or three weeks in terms of just general raw information to understand how the system works. So I thought that was important. That's one reason I wanted it made during the city manager's report, uh, because it's important to the citizens and we want to be able to communicate that that uh, this this didn't just happen well it just it just manifested itself here three or four or five months ago but this this issue started two or three years ago when all this was put into place but we we've owned up to the fact we've got a problem and we're trying to solve it and I think with you on board we're making great strides and the other thing is I mean that's your that's your sole responsibility is to solve this problem where the staff, not only they were having to solve this problem, but then try to take care of their daily work and it just, at some point it gets overwhelming. So we're glad you're here. And thank you and Mr. Selman for getting together and, and moving forward on this. The other thing is that 
we don't we're not terminating people service because of the errors in the bill and we want to make everyone whole and that's our goal at some point we're going to be made whole when all the calculations can be made on a accurate information level but that doesn't mean that if you come in and you can't pay if your bill is five hundred dollars and you can't pay and you agree to a fifty dollar a month payment that's fine but if you don't make the fifty dollar a month payment then you're subject to termination because it, it, I'm assuming that the, the agreed payment is what someone can afford on a monthly basis to continue to have the water flowing until we get all the bugs worked out of it. So uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna allow the city or the citizens to take advantage of the system. We want to work with citizens to make sure we're not overburdening them, and that they're we're being fair in terms of what we're asking them to pay towards the system. But at some point, it's all going to get reconciled, and we're trying to move there as quickly as possible. And uh, so we appreciate that. <clears throat> Any other comments, and we'll we'll move on. But uh, I think this has been very educational and informative, and I hope there was a number of people uh, watching on this television as well as here in the audience that that this was a, an extremely good learning experience. I think for all of us, and we appreciate your work. Any any other comments from the council? Well, I do. All right. Well, what make your motion? Well, no, it's it's. Well, it's it's either it's in black and white and and we just you made a comment saying that we're not going to let anyone be disconnected that's my concern period is we we are sitting here saying it's our issue it, it, and i get all of that so give me guidance here my point is it isn't fair that someone get disconnected not because they haven't paid a bill not because of any other reason but because of what has been created for whatever reason i don't care about the reasons it's tough it's not someone's fault that they received a bill this lady in particular for example amongst many that they should be disconnected we don't have anything in place i mean i understand mayor in a perfect world and in theory that should happen there should be a payment plan that's not happening it's not in other words every person that is coming across with an issue on their bill outside of you didn't pay it leave all that aside but inside of because of what's happened here in the last few months should not be disconnected period they're not i beg to differ i mean i don't think that's a true statement but give me that's what i'm asking is is that happening well, no one's telling me no we, and, we, we and i don't think we cannot just keep going forward six to eight weeks and allow that to happen one person is not okay so i don't want to put anything or anyone in detriment of anything but honestly speaking you know someone getting cut off to me is more important or just as important as you know the credit rating and all of that stuff that's all important but talk to the people that can't be here and say i got this bill and i don't understand it and you know we're just trying to get our stuff together and it's going to take six to eight weeks on this side of it next week we'll discuss the other side of it all right well somebody answer I, a question I, well uh, i hear i hear the the i'm not sure i heard a question in there what i think i'm hearing is find a path find a mechanism to ensure that those that might be being cut off as a result of some error in our system, that that cutoff would not occur. Find that path, and and we will endeavor to find that path. The uh, the cutoffs this year are below. 2018 is below what they were in 2017. So we're we're, we're there's not an excessive number of cutoffs in this year versus last year. Well, I mean. Mr. Hunter. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, the date, uh, Council Member Lindsay Opal, is 4 5 2017 is when we met for the uh, winter quarter averaging workshop session. And then there was another one where April it was a 5th. budget one, right? Yes, yes ma'am. We'll, we'll get, we'll get that to the council. Well, I think I understand what she's saying. And I think what at least my experience, and I don't know how you put this in words, but anyone that has contacted me in my office, I have sent them to you or to Sylvia or to Mark, and 
they have responded in that they've contacted people, we've resolved the issue, and either they've determined that, okay, instead of owing $500, you own $300, and the people say that's okay, or, or they'll pay that, or we'll set up a payment plan. I don't know, I've not had anybody call and tell me they've had their water cut off. Uh, and I, I, I think with your instruction that that's not the plan. The only really reason that I understand now that anybody's water would be terminated is if they fail to perform under the agreement they agreed to. And I, I can address that, Mayor. That's correct. We have ceased disconnections, even for those people that are on a payment plan that are perhaps struggling because there was a question of a bill. We are re-reviewing the payment plans. We are re-establishing. So from the points of no disconnect, nobody's getting disconnected at this particular okay, point in so time. So we have ceased. I mean, correct. Why did we have ceased say all that disconnections. We've ceased all first. disconnections. Some, some people get disconnected because well, obviously they move. Or uh, yeah, yeah. I'm that not sort talking of about that. But just... But we have ceased all disconnections. And, and again, we are encouraging our customers, if they were on a payment plan, for example, they were on a payment plan back in June and there was a high spike and they've worked out that spike into their payment plan. We're re-reviewing, re-establishing payment plans. We're not kicking anybody so we're out. Not gonna do, we're not disconnecting No, we, we will work. Now, we do have we do have customers who, you know, yes. this is a habitual, we're even working with them because you're right, at this point we need to gain confidence back and, and you know, we don't do that by saying, sorry, Charlie, we're going to cut you off. So we, we are intentionally working with every single customer who calls. And, and what date was that when y'all started this? It's been about 10 days now. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. Okay. I don't know. Okay. So the bottom line is, uh, Mr. Ms. Rubio, I'm sorry. I guess what I'm hearing is we have a path forward yes, for sir. anyone who might have had a really high, high bill and it didn't really, wasn't their fault. It was maybe the, the, the system that we have in place. And so are we gonna look at those bills eventually? And if they pay too much, Ms. Trevino, will they be able to get a credit or a reimbursement? What is, we're gonna be looking at that as a path forward. We are, and we're looking at every account specifically. Okay. Mary, you just sent me one the other day. She had a spike. We went through, we went through, we readjusted, we re-reviewed. She had her plumbing receipts. She had all of her information. Okay. We adjusted the credit back onto the account okay. and her payment plan was readjusted. Good. So that's what we're working out. It's it's the same as your mortgage, your electric bill, everything else. We're trying to act as a, a good steward and, and, and win back that confidence that we're not heartless down here. We really are trying to work with everybody. Well, thank you and I appreciate your hard work. Thank Everyone you. is working really hard. Yes, I appreciate it. I know Mr. <laughs> Selman, uh, Mr. Collins, thank you for coming and joining our team. We need the expertise. And so we are gonna, we're on that path forward and we're gonna have more presentations, is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, I don't see any other lights up. Uh, we appreciate your time. We've taken enough. You need to get back to work and get a water problem straightened out. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're gonna move on and uh, we look forward to periodic updates from you. And again, we appreciate it very much. So now we've got gas. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bill Mahaffey, director of the gas department, mayor, council members. I'm here to present the uh, gas CPR report. <coughs> Just, I'll try to be quick. Um, some key points that I want to point out on on this uh, on this our CPR is that our uh, actual our actual operating expenditures remain stable, as you can see here. Right here, we've gone from uh, around 19 million for the last four years. So we uh, continue to operate at a uh, within our budget. Our Texas Municipal League performance rating continues to remain excellent at 98% for the eighth consecutive year. It's an overall score that TML uses to rate the gas department's performance based on a review of our annual regulatory audits. And then, um, I'm gonna skip some of these since I know y'all are on a time crunch. Well, let, let me ask you, what were you talking about? Something remained the same the last couple of years? The, the, this, the Texas Municipal, Municipal League performance rating it's a uh, it's a rating that we get every year. They they come and they review all our annual audits. 
from the Railroad Commission, and they give us a rating based on those scores. Okay. So it's remained in the excellent range. Um, one of the only measures that we kind of took a dip on this year was our percent of our responses to gas leaks within 40 minutes. And I wanted to point out that we had a new uh, work order system that was implemented in January and February. <laughs> and our guys kind of had a little bit of a learning curve <laughs> on their statuses. So we were low for a couple of months, but they were still responding in that time. They just, they were putting it in the wrong status. So we, we took a dip there, but those, those should uh, <coughs> go up next year. And 40 let, minutes let, is let a let pretty, pretty short time frame. On Sorry. your loss and unaccounted gas percentage, we yes. have zero. Yes, right now it's is at zero percent. We have we have that's this may change as we get new data, um, but right now our our uh, sold gas and our purchased gas are about even. That's how we. That's how we. Is uh, that based that. on faulty readings from the meters? <laughs> no, I'm well, serious. I, I would. I w well, I hope it stays at zero percent, and then it'd be accurate. But uh, but our our loss in the account of four has always been very low, around one percent, two percent, and um, it's always been very, you know, pretty consistent. That's a good rating. One percent. I'm not arguing that, that that that's not a good rating, but what I'm <coughs> trying to get at is that. The same system that we're using to read the gas meters, is, is it not the same system as it is to read the water meters? Yes, it is. And so if the Wi-Fi is not getting good information from the water meter, it's what makes me think the Wi-Fi is getting good information from gas meters. That's a good point, Mayor, and, and P Peter is, is looking into to all of those aspects. And Well, I'm asking this probably from a little more of a part of the presentation. Personal experience. Yeah. So, um, I mean, on the gas, my utility bills I showed y'all there, I had, you know, zero gas usage for several months. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, let's see. Where we're our, uh, the number of gas taps is at an all-time high, capturing around 65% of the new residential homes. And then uh, at the end of uh, FY17, the gas department started locating lines for water, wastewater, and stormwater, which I think we brought up in the last presentation. But I wanted to point out that our ticket count is increased by 14%, and it's a, still a very successful program. So I felt like we've done a great job this year in uh, maintaining that program and, and uh, continuing to improve on it. Um, I'm gonna, I know y'all are in a time crunch, so I'm gonna skip the kind of one of the things I wanted to bring up that I think y'all brought up last year in our presentation about the uh, ga natural gas generators and some of using natural gas more for, for power generation. And I had a I had some good new a good news story on that for y'all. Um, probably two or three months after that presentation, we actually started doing research on that. And uh, while we were doing research, we stumbled onto a uh, a project that HEB was doing with a company called Enchanted Rock, and they uh, they do microgrid systems where they're using the generators for peak shaving. They do projects for large companies, large buildings, and uh, we were pretty happy to run into them. They they actually had they put generators on all the HEBs, which accounted for about eight megawatts of uh, microgrid power. And so, just so I know, each each megawatt for us means about twelve thousand dollars in additional revenue every year. And uh, these, this program is, is great, and I know they're looking into putting them at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and Driscoll Hospital is looking into projects. That's about 14 megawatts. And then we actually are also considering them for the Allison Wastewater Treatment Plant and then also in other projects throughout the city. 
and it, it's a great it's kind of a win-win situation because they're coming in they're maintaining the generators they're they're operating the generators they're putting them in at about 10 percent of the cost of the generator of course this, there's contractual uh, items that we're reviewing right now to see if it works with our energy contract and uh, so essentially we're getting a generator at 10 percent of the cost and then also the gas department is receiving a monthly revenue on those projects so i want to bring that up uh, because i know that was a something y'all wanted to see us look into and it kind of fell on our laps and uh, i think it's a great program they're a great company to work for um, if you want to see one, if you just go behind one of the HEBs in town, their generators are, look great. They're real quiet, and they we may be hearing from them in the future, <coughs> depending on how the projects go for the city. But uh, that's pretty much all I had. Everything else has pretty much stayed the same. Um, I stand by for any questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Bill, the, uh, do they need the hospitals to occupy some of those generators? Or the uh, I think Driscoll is looking at doing their their project. I think is around four to five megawatts, um, and they're in negotiations with Enchanted Rock right now. And do we have any anybody in facilities actually? looking where we might be able to use that application oh city facilities? So, city facilities so the allison wastewater treatment plant right now is looking <laughs> into this option and i think there's other projects within the city that this has become an option on the list for for um, replacing gen old generator gen sets we actually get a, about a four-year return on investment by installing these so you went from a very large, you know, capital cost that you don't get any return on investment, and you have a continuous maintenance maintenance cost to a project that costs you 10 percent of the cost of the project, and you recover that revenue back within three or three and a half, four years, and you don't need to, you don't have to perform any maintenance, but it's more of a service contract. Any other comments, questions? Have you seen a, a notice in um, or an uptick, and, I, and it made up uh, whether it be gas or electric, I guess, but people getting generators just installed in their residential yeah. usage? Yes, we have. hurricanes and stuff. We've seen an um, uptick in, in red dial meters, which is when somebody has a regular meter, they add a pool heater or a generator, and they need a higher load. We put a different uh, dial on it because they go from an ounce system to like a five pound pressure system. And uh, we've, we've seen a lot of those this year. Uh, that doesn't really help us on our revenue side. I mean, the pool heaters do. The backup generators, I mean, you're only talking a few days a year. It's not a lot of right. natural gas usage. And I, I probably need to get your address to make sure that we're getting. Oh, no, that's fine. Get, no, no, I mean, <laughs> make sure we get the money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no hurry. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Welcome. Keep up the good work.